Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special episode of Signs, Planets, and Stellar Rhythms. And we're going to be focusing on one specific thing in astrology, and that is Vesta and its transit in the sign of Virgo. That is coming up here in beginning in uh, late October 2020, all the way for a nine month period. Uh, until July of 2021. So it's a really big deal for when a, when a planet spends, especially one that is um, inside Jupiter's orbit, spends a lot of time in one sign. It's a, definitely something worth talking about, worth, worth sharing with everyone here. So I hope you learn a lot during this uh, about this particular asteroid Vesta, which has been something that I've studied um, considerably and it con continues to capture my attention in its uh, wisdom, guidance, and, and knowledge that I, I seem to uh, come into contact with and be able to share that with everyone. And a big reason why I, I actually wrote a book called The Sacred Hearth Within that, that really goes into explaining what Virgo is in astrology and, and, and certainly in shamanic astrology. But so, uh, Without uh, further delay, I'm going to share what I have coming up here with this Vesta and Virgo transit and uh, a lot of new uh, revelations here around that. So hang on. All right. Yes, um, the Sacred Heart within. So Vesta and Virgo. So uh, Vesta is an asteroid body that orbits between Mars and uh, uh, Jupiter. And there is, of course, it's part of the asteroid belt out there. And it is now technically the most massive asteroid. Uh, it got um, put into that position after the, what used to be the most massive asteroid, Ceres, became a dwarf planet. And uh, after, especially after the spacecraft, uh, Dawn uh, went out there several years ago and uh, did some studies of both Vesta and Ceres, and especially with Ceres, found that it's you know, um, is fairly large and it's uh, fully round as well at the same time. Whereas Ver uh, Vesta, not quite there. It's kind of this odd round shape, but it is um, uh, almost, it's almost uh, uh, capable of becoming that. So if they had a little more mass to it, it would have been able to be put into that particular category. But the focus of this is, is this transit of Vesta and Virgo. And I also going to look at a couple of times, a few times when Vesta was in Virgo in previous occasions where it spent nine months in that sign, not just in its regular transit where it's just a few months, but actual like most of the most of a, of, of a given year. So let's continue to talk about what Vesta means to kind of set the table a little bit with this. It was discovered, it was the fourth asteroid uh, discovered and discovered in 1807, and it was located in the sign of Virgo, 29 degrees Virgo. Uh, it's it's an asteroid that has uh, that is almost a planet, um, and studies have been done. Uh, astronomers that have looked at this, as it has a core, it has a mantle, and it also has a crust, and so that right there qualifies it as that kind of that almost. Uh, coming into a space where it could be a, a planet uh, at may or was perhaps part of a planet at one time in the solar system's history. What is also remarkable about this is that it's the brightest asteroid. That's the only one that we can see with the naked eye on a regular basis. I'm not talking about the ones that might, uh, smaller ones that might come in and uh, hit the Earth's atmosphere that turn into a meteor. But the, um, the, the nature of this is it has a high reflectivity or albedo, which at a time of its opposition can be uh, discerned, can be seen for a few week uh, period uh, during that time. And it's, there's one coming up here in uh, March. Vast and Sermonic Astrology and you know, one could use this in their own astrology practice as well. Some of what uh, I was inspired with was also through Demetra George's book, The Asteroid Goddesses, uh, my own studies and reflections of what, what Vesta brought to 
uh, the lives of, of clients that I gave readings to and my own life as well and what that meant. And so this was, was something that came uh, out from that research and, that, and those observations. The gifts of Vesta is that it can create opportunities to connect with the middle world and the terrestrial initiators of Saturn and Jupiter. There's a, there's especially Saturn, although Jupiter comes in every, uh, once in a while and has connections with it at, at a couple of times in its um, synodic cycle um, uh, dance with these uh, outer planets. It also is, a, it's, it means it's a kind of a sacred devotion to this to a specific archetypal energy. So whatever your archetype might mean, the, the trickster Gemini, Peter Pan energy, or the Capricorn elder, uh, you know, responsible one uh, bearing the burden and the, the knowledge and gifts for the, for the next seven generations, whatever that might be, it's a devotion to that. It's a, it's a reverence, it's a within your being like a fire that's burning within. Uh, it can be looked at as a, 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 a vibration or a heartbeat and those sacred qualities of that particular archetype. The shadow of this, that every, everything has a light and a shadow or gifts and a shadow, it is archetypal dependent and can create this, a disconnection with a life pattern or rhythm if it's not honored. So if that particular archetype is not being uh, nourished in your life, you may find uh, a certain uh, piece that might be missing and that where a piece of your rewards in life can come from, this is not replacing what you might get from Venus or Mars or from the Ascendant or Jupiter, but it adds value to the, to the expression of your own journey, your own natal chart. Uh, access devotion, so if you're only doing that particular archetype, then you, know, it might, uh, have, you might have some challenges around um, the other archetypes that are on, happen to be on your chart. Unless of course you have a, a numerous uh, planets, personal points or planets that are just with uh, that particular archetype of Vesta, whatever that might be, whether it be Gemini or Aries or, or Virgo. You know, if it's, if it's, you have a combination of archetypes, then, you know, there are th there's alchemy that has to take place in order for that to, to really work and in, in, in your life in a, in, a, in a healthy way. So Vesta through the signs. So Vesta takes about, on average, you know, when it's not going through its opposition point, when it's just in its regular motion, it takes about two and a half months to go through a sign. But then when it's entering a sign, the sign that it's going to go retrograde in, and sometimes that can dance between two different signs, eight to nine months. Um, and in this case, it's going to be a nine month period here uh, for Vesta this time around with Virgo. And then each archetype and sign gives a flavor of the specific qualities that we need to keep sacred within ourselves. Uh, a lot of that, I, I, I go through that in my book. Uh, I go through each of the signs and the houses and its relationship to the various planets and the solar system and astrology. So, uh, you know, definitely connect with that. Uh, but I will be over time creating other videos about Vesta and uh, what it, what it, ex how it expresses itself and perhaps the next incarnation and in it's in its next overtone uh, or opposition point with the sun. Uh, that creates a whole new cycle for it, like this one coming up with Virgo, uh, then, you know, be uh, explaining and sharing more about that. So coming up here, March 4th, 2021, is this Vesta Sun opposition point. This is the sort of the center of, that, of this cycle that begins October 22nd, 2020, all the way till uh, in July uh, of 2021. But it's, it's even more the center point of the time where we're at um, this, where Vesta goes retrograde and then when it stations direct. So this applies actually to all the planets that, uh, all the planets that orbit outside uh, beyond Earth and, and asteroids and uh, minor planets. This is the center point, the, the, the sun opposition with whatever body that is, is the center of that retrograde period. So in this case, Vesta stations retrograde January 19th, 2021. 
and um, then the station is direct on April 20th. So there's just this three month period and March 4th is the, is the point where it's roughly in that centerpiece right there. And at this time, this time around, Mars is going to be, not Mars, but uh, Vesta is going to be, uh, uh, going to be in uh, the constellation of, of the lion. In fact, it's going to, it enters the lion constellation or it, it conjuncts the star Regulus coming up here on October 22nd at zero degrees uh, Virgo. But there's a star that it, that it stays, that it goes back and forth with at its, op at its opposition point, and it's called Churton, which is a, a star that is connected to the, the hindquarters, the, uh, you might say the, the rib, the, the second, third chakra area of, if we, were, if we were to call it, if we were to look at the lion constellation and call it that, that, that power point of the lion where it can, Really generate the uh, the power needed for its for its own self for its um, uh, bodily functions and all of this. It it comes from that area. The life force is generated through that those lower chakras, and that's where Ver where Vesta is going to be located at the opposition point. And I'll show you a map of that. So here we have Vesta and Churton. That's that star I'm talking about, kind of the lower area. This is the tail, the nebula. Regulus, this is uh, representing the heart of the lion. Subra is the, uh, the forepaw uh, or the, uh, the paw of the um, uh, lion. Then we have, uh, I, the way it's, the lions go in, in this program I use called Stellarium, uh, it doesn't draw the whole picture of the lion here. So I add some, uh, some lines here in that same constellation. And, but this is a really recognizable constellation. It's got this kind of the sickle kind of uh, uh, star pattern that comes out uh, of Algebia right there at the, at the head and neck uh, joint there, shoulder, and um, comes out. And then you get the, the eye, nose, the, the, the view, alter the view of the, of the lion there. Boom, so that moves us to uh, where Vesta is. And um, so Vesta will not be uh, visible in the city or the suburbs. You have to go under extremely dark skies to see it. And you have to have really keen eyesight, at least this time around, because it's at a plus six magnitude, which is right at the edge of visibility to the naked eye. But there are some years where Vesta is uh, closer to a 5.1, where it's a little easier to pick up um, especially if you're outside the city. And for about a few week uh, period, you know, say a week uh, before opposition and a week after opposition is kind of that prime territory where uh, Vesta can become visible. And certainly if you had, um, uh, you know, a tripod with, with a, um, uh, even just small binoculars uh, can easily pick up Vesta um, if it's stable and if you're not uh, rocking the, uh, the the binoculars there, uh, at least this time around. But yes, it is uh, it is visible to the naked eye, and you have to be uh, at least this time around uh, under the really perfectly dark skies to see it. Um, previous Vesta Sun opposition points in Virgo. This is a um, uh, a theme that I'm recently exploring. And I will be building upon this at a later time, but in 2021, Saturn and Jupiter will also um, be changing signs, of course. Actually, they change signs at the end of this year in 2020, but they are um, moving from Capricorn to Aquarius. And Aquarius is, is this greater universal um, uh, to some degree, light polarized energy that is about you know, universal love, that is about uh, breakthroughs of old traditions, old ways that no longer uh, are healthy and kind of sending a kind of an electric shock through the foundation into, into the beyond, into something, a new form, new idea, new novelty coming through. This could show technological breakthroughs, uh, greater awareness, uh, epiphanies, these kinds of things that uh, will help humanity going forward. 
And uh, I've, in these years, in these years, uh, well, uh, this year, 2021, where Saturn is in Aquarius with Vesta in Virgo, also in 1992, uh, this was happening, but there was a theme around these last two times that Vesta uh, had a opposition with the sun and the sign of Virgo in 63 and 92, where it's in this 29 year pattern, Vesta is, and Virgo, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit here, has a connection to, to Gaia, has a connection to the earth mother and understanding the sacred rhythm and the patterning of that our connection to that space, the, the, the cycles, the circle, the seasons, and our own relationship with that and how vital it is. So it's interesting that these things happened in, uh, we have 92, we have the precursor to the Coyote, uh, Kyoto Protocol in 97, but in 92, they had one uh, here where a bunch of uh, a framework was developed by the United Nations that led to this. And it was about, was really the first more, much more powerful environmental uh, awareness on a global scale of climate change. And our awareness that, hey, you know, we are, there is some level of influence, human influence on this planet that is shifting the, the CO2 production, for example, and changing the, um, uh, the way we have our relationship, all of the industrialization that we've had and the, uh, the digging into the earth and the, uh, all the chemicals that we're using, the pollution and all of this, there's, this is, this framework was to help mitigate this. And in 63, which was one of the center points of a longer term awareness, like the 90s, 1990s of environmentalism, of climate change awareness. Although at that time, especially in the early 60s, they were looking at this as there was actually maybe a global cooling going on. They had a lot of theories around that. But it, the awareness people on especially like our own human impact, uh, just uh, a few weeks before in 1962, before Vesta moved into Virgo for its nine month journey, uh, just a few weeks before that, um, Rachel Carson printed, uh, published Silent Spring, which had to do with the uh, damages done by the chemical pesticide DDT, which eventually got banned years later, uh, actually soon after that. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't long after that was banned. And their concern of the affecting, uh, affecting the wildlife, especially the birds. But this was this whole awareness, including the space program and our, our perspective of Earth as a whole, really came about during this time period and resulted in the creation of the EPA and an Earth Day in 1970. So really powerful time. And uh, so 63 was this, uh, that, that was that opposition time of, of uh, Vesta and the sun and the sign of Virgo. But then of course, you know, that kind of launched into that space by, by Rachel Carson's book. And then in another landmark book in 1854, uh, uh, 19th century um, naturalist, environmentalist, if we can call it that, uh, he, Henry David Thoreau published Walden, which was really went into uh, the, his relationship with nature and how vital and important and what he learned from that, which is radical for that time, really radical for that time. Also in 1963 and in 1992, Saturn was in the sign of Aquarius, like it's coming up in here in 2021. Um, but in 2021, we get Jupiter also. So we didn't have that in 90, we didn't have that in 92. In 63, at that time, Jupiter was in Pisces. So it had moved beyond Aquarius, but Jupiter was in uh, opposition to um, the, uh, uh, the Vesta position. So that there was some lending and expansion of that, um, that energy uh, to uh, Vesta's archetypal nature in Virgo. This is an area that I definitely want to do a little more research on, especially in combination with its relationship with Saturn and 
excuse me, Jupiter as well. Here we have Vesta and Virgo, more about this uh, particular uh, a sign. Uh, so on October 22nd, Vesta enters that sign of Virgo um, at the time of this recording, which was uh, uh, roughly about six days before this happened. Um, the asteroid has spent about nine months in that sign, and it doesn't move into the sign of Libra until July 18th. And um, Vesta symbolizes the sacred hearth within. So it connects us to our spiritual service and nurturing the fire of our home and our community, especially the archetypal quality on a personal level within ourselves. Of course, the community has its own heartbeat, has its own archetypes that are uh, connected to that. But Vesta reminds us to connect that and, and to be of service in that way. Now, in this year, uh, another entry into this which is another thing that got my attention, is Vesta has three oppositions with Neptune uh, coming up here, beginning December of 2020, and then two more, one in February, and then another one in July of 2021. So all of those are um, gonna be really important markers in Vesta's development, Vesta and Virgo, and its relationship with Pisces that polarity. So on the Zodiac, Pisces and Virgo are in opposition to each other. But opposition does not mean that they oppose each other. It's simply that they can see each other really well, and they are in polarity. So there's a greater illumination between the two signs. When you have two a significant um, planetary bodies or points that are opposite each other like this, and in this case, Neptune and uh, Vesta. Uh, I'm gonna talk about some other alignments in the rest of the uh, Vesta transit in Virgo that I'll um, coming up here in just a few moments. So just to go back into what, what Virgo's about, for those of you that have Vesta and Virgo or um, are connecting with this energy more fully uh, coming up here in uh, beginning uh, late October, through uh, July, Virgo is for the co-creation of maintaining the sacred patterning, sometimes even creating or recreating the sacred patterning, not just maintaining it, but even a, a recreation of that. And the pattern, the sacred patterning, the rhythms of the planet. It's also, an, it's an analytical detail, detail oriented archetype and is a giver sign through its work and dedication to what is sacred for itself. So, or I should say not for itself or what is sacred to what it's devoting to. So you find Virgo in uh, the work that is truly trying to understand the, the mechanism behind the mechanism. Where is the pattern? Where is the, what is the origin of that pattern? It could be in relation to the creation of the cosmos, to the way the earth uh, in its relationship to the sun and the solar system. Um, and our own human patterns, including through psychotherapy or our relationship with technology, um, computers and such, our, our, you know, our psyche, the patterns within, the patterns within the archetypes, and really getting into the nitty gritty that way. Or maybe in our, on a household, the, the, the patterns of our lives of how we arrange our, our home and our life structure and our, perhaps our marriages and our relationships at work. What does that mean? And so Virgo is, can have a connection and uh, has this perception of being able to connect on that level. It's an earth sign and it gets into the, into the, into the reality of, of uh, what that is all about. So for those who are, have some strong Virgo in their chart, it's also Virgo is a, um, of all the earth signs, it's the one that's might say closest to the mind uh, which is more air, but it's a, I, I found in my own experience with it that it can be a bit cerebral, uh, but from a, a, not in the same way as say Gemini, Libra, or, uh, or Aquarius. It, it's, it's, in, it's, in the, it's in the patterns that it, it falls itself into and creates and connects to. And that's where that, 
that you might say the, the way the pattern of the neurons are rather than just the individual points inside, inside the mind itself. So here are the, uh, the three dates of the uh, connection um, with Vesta and Neptune. Uh, three oppositions, one December 20th at 1817 Virgo Pisces, February 9th, 2021 at 19 degrees, 33 minutes Virgo Pisces. Virgo, of course, being Vesta and then Neptune in, in the sign of Pisces. And then you have the, I wrote this in here just to show everybody again, the reminder is March 4th, 2021 by Churton, the star Churton, C-H-E-R-T-A-N. And Zosma is also uh, part of that, uh, the, the, uh, the back of the, of the lion and uh, my connected to, uh, definitely connected to the spine. And so then we have July 2nd, 2021, the last opposition point uh, at 23 degrees, 11 minutes Virgo Pisces. So they, they spent a lot of time together, Virgo and Neptune. And I'm gonna share some of the themes of what that is. So the three big themes that um, are here with this Neptune Virgo, or sorry, Neptune Vesta opposition in Pisces Virgo. It's rediscovering our spiritual journey with relation to Gaia. I was talking about earlier about the awareness of environmental uh, climate change and our relationship to earth and caring for the earth, being a steward, being a druid, being a, uh, you know, a caretaker, and that we all have a certain responsibility on some level to help with this as a human being living on the skin of earth. Uh, that this is going to be an important theme. And I think certainly with the crisis that's going on in 2020, uh, the, uh, and there's an underlying crisis in here in it all, which has to do with uh, the environmental situation, the impact of humanity, as well as uh, uh, and its impact into climate change. And how are we going to live in the future? You know, what, how are we going to create energy? How are we going to uh, work with it? What kind of jobs and how our family is going to be structured, what is our routine, what is our governments, everything around Earth. Then number two is what it means to be in service. So connecting with ourselves and finding ways that we can be of service in the world, we can be in service with Earth. How can we fully participate in that? And when we do that, we also more fully participate in our own lives because we, it, it, lead, it can lead to a healthier life, um, including you know, how, we, how we handle uh, agriculture and um, the environment and, and you know, what uh, the impact of, of all the things that we manufacture, plastics, for example. That's a, I mean, that has been an ongoing crisis for quite a long time and it's getting to a critical, critical point with all the plastics that we have right now. As, as an example, and what we what are what are we to do? So this is the time to, to come up with and connect with these ideas, maybe with Saturn and Jupiter and Aquarius, to maybe help us uh, find a way to be more in resonance with Earth here. Co-creation with the sacred patterning, the patterning itself, and being moving with it in harmony with it, rather than um, you know going against the uh, you know what what the earth's health is all about and, and our own patterning. And um, what is, where is the, our, you know, what is about our journey and our, uh, you know, co-creation with the universe? How can we co-create and, and still live uh, healthy, responsible lives going forward in this, in this planet? And um, the sacred patterning is recognizing the, what things might be out of that pattern, out of our own space that is not healthy or, that is you know, toxic in some fashion and finding out what is healthy and maybe working with that and expanding upon it that, that or modifying it in some way to help us get back into a pattern that is more in relationship with earth in a, in a, healthy, in a healthy manner. There are other significant uh, dates of Vestas transit in Virgo. And when we 
um, when we start journeying through the rest of 2020 and into 2021, of course, there'll be videos where I'll, I'll be taking bits and pieces of this with other updates that I'll share with everyone. But there's some really interesting ones here. For example, Vesta squaring the lunar nodes three times. The nodes, the lunar nodes are the things that, um, for uh, I say this loosely, control the eclipses that we see, solar and lunar eclipses. So they have a huge impact on the, um, the past and the future and being able to uh, uh, connect us with, uh, with our higher selves and looking at our own shadow. So Vesta squaring this, uh, the nodes are in Gemini and Sagittarius. Vesta squaring this can be, I think, very, very helpful in bringing Virgo into the picture here. Uh, Neptune is also having its own relationship to the lunar nodes and does have three squares as well with these, um, with these, uh, with these nodes. So something to look forward to. I don't have the, the dates listed here. I'm focused more on, the, on Vesta. Mars does square Vesta once on uh, March 21st uh, uh, when, when Mars is in the sign of Gemini. Uh, Venus aspects Vesta twice, once as an opposition on March 7th and once as a square on May 16th. And then Mercury has five aspects of um, Vesta and no conjunctions. So these are all squares and oppositions, three squares and two, or no, four squares and one opposition. So between December and July. So four of them are in 2021, uh, and then one of them is in December. Now, what's interesting is that three of these on this uh, chart here are in March and three of them are in May. So those look like times of, of you know, where the in-service to spirit signs, these in shamanic astrology, um, what we look and redefine the modalities that um, uh, like, for example, Virgo, Gemini, um, Pisces and Sagittarius are all mutable signs in traditional Western astrology as a modality. But it's in looking at the more essence of what these modalities are, it arrives in you know, what Daniel Giamario came up with is looking at the mutable signs as in service to spirit. That means that all four of these signs are here as their primary purpose to be in service to spirit in some fashion you know, whatever their archetype is. And so Vesta is truly to be of service to the sacred patterning, the co-creation. Uh, Gemini in service to spirit through being able to, for, to, to, to be a contrarian and to, to get people to see other perspectives, to be able to laugh at themselves and um, break the tension and be able to see different angles that they couldn't see before. Sagittarius, in service of spirit by in search of truth and meaning. And so, and then Pisces in service to spirit through the emerging with, with the divine um, by simply being opening up the heart space and, and allowing that to merge with the divine energy. All of that is in service to spirit and they can all co uh, coordinate and, and collaborate here um, and come up with some of the best ways to do that, or at least that I see is an intent here with all of this. So perhaps this part of that next stage for 2021, including Saturn and Jupiter moving into Aquarius, is setting up this area where we're going to have a, a, a completely different feel, archetypally speaking, in 2021 than we do in 2020. This is, it's not going to be such a, a heavy, intense space. Now, there'll be a lot to pick up, a lot of debris, a lot of things that have been uh, poured over and uh, the tumultuousness and, and the fallout from this. Perhaps that in service part will give us a chance to truly help guide that energy towards something that is constructive and unhelpful and beneficial to humanity and to ourselves on a personal level as well. Um, COVID-19, the economic crisis, the uh, racial injustice, um, the uh, uh, educational crisis, 
also that has come from that and the environmental crisis. We saw huge impact of that in recent months with the fires in the Western US. We also saw in January at the fires, January, 2020, the fires in um, Australia and how powerful that impact has been. So we can all connect and look and see, we have the capacity to come up with solutions and to devote ourselves to uh, not just about saving ourselves, but other all the other life that's on this planet that is suffering. Um, so from a Pisces perspective, it's, it's connecting also to that suffering and going, hey, how can we provide a safe space for you? How can we uh, show up and allow you to be vulnerable and know that there isn't you know, gonna be a more pain, but to uh, affect healing, affect healing in that, in that region. There's other planets that are part of this, other, other aspects of all 2021, but I'll, that's, that's something I'll talk about in December when I do a, a video that is just about uh, the calendar year of 2021. But for now, this is, I'm gonna leave it at this, uh, with this. Um, of course, as I, I shared before, I do have a book about Vesta in here that I do encourage people that are wanting to know more about the asteroids, specifically Vesta, to check this out. I do have a little bit of information about uh, Ceres, uh, Hygieia, Juno, Pallas Athena, and uh, I believe I have put some information there about Eris, E-R-I-S, in there. So if you're curious about that, you can find that on Amazon as well, ebook version and, uh, and printed. But that's all I've got for you today around this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, topic. And um, again, you're welcome to contact me. And if, you, if this is something that you like, uh, you know, please do click like uh, or leave a comment on the video or send me an email of something maybe perhaps that uh, an idea or, uh, or a question for me. Um, I do love that interaction. So uh, uh, please help, uh, please, uh, please do that. And uh, I just wish you uh, the very best in, um, in this, uh, uh, you know, um, that we, who we are as human beings here and, um, you know, keeping the peace and it is gonna be a, you know, there's some still some more tumultuous times coming up here for the, you know, during this general election period and, and after the aftermath of that. Um, but I do feel I do have some some hope and I, I can see the the heart of humanity uh, wants that joy and happiness in their lives. And um, it's just we are um, having some challenges navigating that, but maybe Virgo can help us see the, the greater pattern and to be able to navigate that more um, uh, in, in a more healthy way uh, for ourselves. So I wish you all uh, a happy day and uh, you know peace and love to, to everyone and to all of our relations out there. Thank you very much.